Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. This is the third talk in the series on taking refuge. It's a brief talk, I think, about Vajrayana refuge. In the previous talks, we saw the nature of refuge, that we're seeking shelter and help and support, and the difference between the basic refuge and the Bodhisattva's refuge. So today we'll move on to Vajrayana. Vajrayana is a very special aspect of the Bodhisattva path. Through the visualizations and the special methods, it manages to put a face, a form, onto all of the Bodhisattva teachings. The abstract ideas become symbols and beings. Anyway, this isn't to talk about Vajrayana, that's a big topic, but it's to talk about Vajrayana refuge. So in Vajrayana, one still takes refuge in the Buddha, the finest of beings, in the Dharma, the purest and best of all ideas and teachings, and in the Sangha, the very best of friends. But then we have three very special aspects of those, and they're called the three roots or the three sources, a source, like a wellspring. Root is quite a good term, and the word root implies something that's there and that will continually bring benefit, like the root of a tree, and the tree gets bigger and bigger, produces more and more fruit year after year. The gurus are the source or the root of what is usually called blessing. And this word blessing, chinlap in Tibetan, actually means transmission. Transmission of power and ability, transmission of that power and ability through the lineage. The yidams are the root or the source of accomplishment. Accomplishment, achievement in Dharma. And the protectors are the source or the root of activity. They are then the three roots. First, and perhaps most important, we have the Guru. There is no Vajrayana practice without a Guru. The Gurus, or your Guru, can be considered as a special aspect of the Buddha refuge. Buddha was perfect. There's just a little problem. We missed him by a few thousand years, a few thousand kilometers, probably too. But if you find an authentic guru, what that person will give you is exactly the same as the Buddha would have given you. A true guru is the Buddha in your life. There is no difference. And more than that, because the Guru is the holder of this lineage of insight, they actually hold something, like an ambassador holds the power of a kingdom. Because they hold that insight, and because our true nature is Buddha nature, then they can awaken the Buddha within us. That's, in the end, the main point of Vajrayana practice, to help us find the Buddha within, the Buddha that we truly are, the beauty within us, the love within us, the wisdom within us. A guru is there to bring that out. So the guru is the Buddha in our life. The guru is the Buddha 
First outside, who gradually helps us realize the Buddha. Inside and in the end, we come to understand that there is no difference between what's inside all the different gurus and inside ourselves and every sentient being. But until we find the Buddha within, then we need the Buddha without, which is the guru. So the guru is the very special aspect of the Buddha refuge. It's not just the Buddha out of history. It's not the Buddha as the three kayas, as some cosmic purity. It's not just the Buddha within that we hope and believe we have. There is somebody in your life, a person who can give you teachings and advice and guidance, who is just like the Buddha for you. So that is one very, very special refuge in Bhattarayana. The second root or source are the Yidams. The Yidams, or what does the word Yidam mean? Y means mind and Dam means bond or link or bridge. The Yidams are the practices that carry us across to the living qualities of the Dharma as realization. So of all of the Dharma, which is our second refuge, the 84,000 teachings, the three baskets, the hundred books of the Buddha's teaching, more than that, if we include the Tantra, out of all of that, teachings that we could never master, all of them, then the Guru will give you one, or with time, perhaps more, Yidam practices. They're sort of tailor-made for you, and the guru, a good guru, will tailor-make the practice, make it simple or complicated, will take you through the different steps of in front as oneself, or both the inner teachings and so on. The guru will teach that practice according to just you and your needs. And that will make you advance and help you advance as quickly as you possibly can in this life. So of all of the Dharma teachings, the Yidam practice is the special one that's tailored for you and that will bring to you the blessing, the transmission of power, the transmission of the blessing of those practices within the lineage. So the Yidam practices are our second very special refuge. And then the Sangha in general is our third refuge and in particular the Bodhisattva Sangha. But then many of those Bodhisattvas have manifested as protectors and when we do the protector practices and we develop them then they give us something very special within ourselves. They set up energies, a mechanism, a strength that stops us from giving in to our own weaker moments. It develops a reflex, an energy that just stops. Like, a, like an angry parent might frown at a child who's about to do something a bit dangerous and the child immediately stops. We have an energy that glares at us from inside that says, that will be a big mistake. You will lose something very precious if you go down that road. So of all the Sangha who are our friends to guide and help and protect us, the protector practices are very special because once they're up and running, they are inside us not out there like most of the Sangha are. So the protectors of all the different sorts, there are many sorts, some of them bodhisattvas, some of them energies within us and so on, we are a very special aspect of the Sangha refuge. So when we take refuge in the Vajrayana way, we take a sixfold refuge, Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, 
gurus, yidams and protectors. And more than that, we take all of those six together in one by taking refuge first and foremost in the guru. Because when you look very closely, the guru is the guru, of course. The guru is also the Buddha in our life. The guru gives us the teachings, but the very nature of those teachings, the realization, the real dharma, is alive as the guru. And then the guru forms part of the sangha. But then the guru, being the one who guides and protects us, is our main sangha. We turn to the sangha for help and guidance. In Vajrayana, our first port of call, the most important guidance, comes from our own guru. So we see the guru as Buddha and as Dharma and as Sangha and as the gurus, the presence of all the gurus. He's our guru, but he represents what all of the gurus have to show us. And of the yidams and the protectors. That's it. This was a simple, short talk about Vajrayana refuge. Thank you as always for listening, for sharing this moment. I wish you well. Go well wherever you are.